On one particularly frigid winter night, this incident occurred. The temperature had plummeted well below freezing, and I resided in an apartment while owning an older car. I had possessed the car for quite some time, and I knew that during the winter, I needed to start the engine frequently, especially when it was extremely cold. If I failed to start the car at least once a day, there was a risk of the battery dying. On this specific night, the cold was especially biting. I had used the car earlier in the day, but many hours had passed since then. I didn't want to take any chances, so I decided to let the engine run for a while before retiring for the night. It was probably around 11 p.m. at the time. I left my apartment and ventured outside into the parking lot. My car was parked right in front of my building, alongside several other vehicles. There was an underground parking garage available, but it came at an extra monthly cost, and I hadn't felt the need to acquire it. As I stepped outside, the cold enveloped me, and an eerie silence prevailed. Despite wearing my winter coat, a warm hat and gloves, I still felt an intense chill it was almost as if the freezing wind was making it difficult to draw breath. I entered my car and initiated the engine. It started, but it sounded as if it had just barely come to life. It became evident to me that coming out here was indeed a wise decision. Typically, it's recommended to run your engine for at least 10 minutes to ensure it warms up properly although the exact duration may vary depending on the vehicle. As I sat in my car, I realized that the heat wouldn't kick in until the engine warmed up a bit. I was shivering from the cold, and the thought of sitting in my car for a full 10 minutes didn't sound appealing. So I came up with the idea to take a short drive around the area. This way, the engine would warm up faster due to the movement, and I wouldn't just be sitting there bored. I reversed out of my parking spot and left my apartment complex. Behind my apartment, there was a walking trail and a wooded area, and on the other side of the woods was a residential neighborhood. In front of my apartment complex was a relatively quiet road leading to a busier one. My plan was to drive around the neighborhoods behind my apartment for about 10 minutes and then return. After I left, I took a right turn and continued down the street. I eventually made another right turn, which led me deeper into the neighborhood. It wasn't a densely populated area. There was more space with some wooded areas and larger properties. I drove along several different roads and there was no sign of anyone else on the road, which was to be expected. My main focus was on waiting for the heat in my car to kick in, indicating that the engine was warming up. As I continued driving, I found myself in an area between one neighborhood and another, surrounded by numerous trees. It was then that I noticed a man emerging from the woods, trudging through the snow. He stepped onto the street and stood in my lane. He was a fair distance ahead of me, but I began to slow down. The man was dressed for the harsh weather, wearing a massive coat, gloves, a hat, and what appeared to be snow pants. However, his presence in the middle of the road was puzzling. At first, I assumed he was about to cross the street, but it became apparent he had no intention of doing so. It was unclear why he was standing there, and his actions in such weather, and at that time of night, seemed rather peculiar. I had to exercise caution and proceed with care. I came to a complete stop on the road. Unsure of what this man wanted, he looked at me and gestured for me to come closer, which only added to my uncertainty. He seemed peculiar, and I couldn't discern his intentions. As I sat there parked, he began to approach my car. 
eventually coming to my driver's window as if he intended to speak to me. I rolled down my window, surprised that it worked in the biting cold. Sometimes, in such freezing temperatures, the window could be frozen shut. However, instead of initiating a conversation, as soon as the window was down, the man aggressively reached inside my car. It seemed like he was trying to grab my keys from the ignition. Instinctively, I tried to bat his hand away, and I stepped on the gas pedal, propelling my car forward. This abrupt move forced the man to retract his hand, and I drove away from him, leaving him standing by the side of the road. I decided that I had had enough of driving around and headed back toward my apartment, which was very close by, just on the other side of the woods. I drove around to the front, entered the parking lot, and returned to my usual parking spot. I turned off the car and stepped out. As soon as I exited the vehicle, I spotted the same man emerging from the edge of the woods behind my apartment building. Although he was still quite a distance away, I realized that the woods he was coming from were not far at all from where I had encountered him earlier. I hadn't considered that he might be able to see where I was going, even though I wasn't very far away. In a hurry, I ran for my apartment door as I saw the man drawing nearer. I managed to make it inside and up to my place on the second floor. Once safely indoors, I rushed to the window and peered out into the parking lot. There, I saw the man standing beside my vehicle, attempting to open the locked door. Concerned for my safety, I promptly called the police and reported the incident. However, when I returned to the window, the man had vanished. The police arrived and took a statement from me, assuring me that they would keep an eye out for the individual. Fortunately, he hadn't managed to break into my car or cause any harm. After that night, I never saw him again, and I've always wondered what his intentions were. I'm relieved that you managed to get away from that situation. This incident occurred about a year ago while I was driving home from work. It was very late at night, and I was on a quiet road, a route I had taken many times before. Typically, it took me about 20 minutes to get back home, and this drive seemed no different. After exiting the highway, I found myself on a quieter road, which stretched for about five miles. This road was flanked by mostly wilderness on both sides. As I drove along, I noticed blue and red flashing lights ahead. My initial thought was that the police had pulled someone over. However, as I drew closer, I began to see more details. It became apparent that there was someone standing on the side of the road, dressed in what appeared to be a safety vest. This person looked somewhat like a police officer. I slowed down as I approached the scene, and the car with the flashing lights didn't resemble a typical police vehicle. It seemed to be an ordinary car with emergency lights installed. The man standing in the road started walking across as I neared, so I reduced my speed even further. He then motioned for me to stop, so I complied. I was quite curious about the situation. Considering the remote and rural nature of the area, surrounded by woods on both sides. Once I had stopped, I rolled down my window to speak with the man. He had dark hair, was wearing a black cap, and had on a black jacket over his vest. He also had a flashlight that he shined directly at me, which was blindingly bright. He greeted me and introduced himself, although I can't recall his name. The man spoke rapidly and explained that they were conducting searches in the area, which apparently was happening on other nearby roads as well. I was somewhat perplexed and asked for clarification. He mentioned it was due to recent criminal activity in the area. When I inquired if he was a police officer, he informed me that he wasn't, but he 
claimed to be working with the police department. He then asked for my consent to search the back of my car and instructed me to unlock the back doors. He began moving towards the back of my vehicle and was about to grab the back door handle. Feeling uneasy about the situation, I firmly declined and abruptly pressed the gas pedal, driving away from him. I could hear him shouting at me to wait as I left him standing in the middle of the road. It was clear to me that this individual was involved in some kind of scam, and I had no idea what his true intentions were. He provided vague details and seemed to be concealing something. Immediately, I dialed 911 and reported the incident to the police. I was told that an officer would be dispatched to the location to investigate. Afterward, I continued my drive home, making it back safely. I sincerely hope that nobody else fell victim to this person's scheme. It remains a mystery what his ultimate plan may have been. You shouldn't feel dumb for sharing your experience. It's important to share such stories, to raise awareness, and potentially help others learn from similar situations. Your cautionary tale can indeed serve as a valuable lesson for others. This story took place a few years ago, when I was 19 years old, at my parents' house. My older sister and her boyfriend were visiting, and we lived in a densely populated neighborhood with numerous houses on our street and the surrounding area. Our house was somewhat larger and situated towards the end of the street. On that particular night, we had planned to order pizza. My mom placed the order, and I volunteered to go pick it up. I had recently acquired a new car and was enjoying driving it. While we could have had the pizza delivered, we usually preferred to fetch it ourselves, since the pizza place was just over a five-minute drive away. It wasn't a significant distance, and it also allowed us to save on the tip. I left the house sometime after 7 p.m., and by then, the sun had already set, leaving the surroundings quite dark. I went out to my car, which was parked at the top of our driveway, and backed out onto the street. As soon as I completed this maneuver, I noticed a car parked on the side of our street with its headlights on. There weren't typically many cars parked along the side of the street, but it wasn't uncommon either. I started driving towards the pizza place, and I noticed that the car behind me began moving as well. It was when it followed closely behind me that I became more attentive to its presence. I approached a stop sign at the end of our street, and when I reached it, the car was right behind me. I turned, and so did the car. It was the immediate following distance that raised my suspicions. I went from thinking it might be an aggressive driver to someone deliberately following me. Although I had no idea why anyone would want to follow me, I continued to drive in the usual route to the pizza place. However, when I made the first turn, the car followed closely, right up to my bumper. I proceeded down the street a bit, and at the next turn, the car once again mimicked my actions. It was at this point that I transitioned from considering it might be an overly aggressive driver to realizing someone was intentionally following me. I turned again and pulled over to the side of the road, hoping the car would pass me. However, instead of passing, it also pulled over. Panic began to set in as I had no idea how to handle the situation. I grabbed my phone and called my mom. While talking to her, I continued making random turns, and the car behind me followed suit. My aim was to try and lose the car, but I wasn't being very successful. My mom advised me to head back home, and if the car was still following when I arrived, she would take further action. It's understandable that you were nervous and unsure about the situation with the car following you. Hindsight often provides clarity, and in such circumstances, it can be challenging to make the best decisions on the spot. 
it's good that you shared your experience, as it may help others be more cautious in similar situations. Moving on to your second story. It occurred during your early morning commute to work, a time when the roads were quiet and driving was more peaceful. You mentioned that you live about 15 minutes from your workplace and prefer taking quieter roads to get there. One morning, around 5 a.m., when it was still dark and serene outside, you encountered a man riding a bike on the road you were traveling on. This particular road had two lanes, one for each direction, and didn't offer much of a shoulder. Initially, you planned to switch into the oncoming traffic lane to pass the cyclist, as there were no other vehicles in sight. However, as you approached the cyclist, he moved to the left, positioning himself right in the middle of your lane. You slowed down, and when you got closer, the cyclist continued to move further into your lane. He appeared to be swerving and maneuvering erratically, though it didn't seem like he lacked the ability to ride a bike. Instead, it seemed like he was deliberately swerving around. You adjusted your speed to match the cyclist's slow pace, and you moved to the other lane. But he followed suit, continuing to swerve and impede your progress. The situation left you perplexed as to the cyclist's intentions and what was going on. It's clear that this was an unusual and unsettling encounter, as the cyclist's behavior seemed deliberate and controlled, yet his motives remained unclear. The situation with the cyclist blocking your way was certainly frustrating, and it's unfortunate that it escalated into damage to your car later on. After being unable to safely pass the cyclist, you honked at him in frustration. However, he continued to block your path and even gave you a rude gesture. It became evident that he was intentionally being difficult. You followed behind him for a few more minutes until you reached a stop sign at an intersection. There, you decided to turn right, followed by a left, with the hope of reconnecting with your original road. Your goal was to put some distance between yourself and the cyclist. Fortunately, your plan worked, and you managed to reach your workplace without further confrontation. The workday proceeded as usual, and you didn't leave the building during your shift. However, when you returned to your car at the end of the day, you discovered that it had been scratched and keyed, presumably by the same cyclist who had caused the earlier disturbance. It was a frustrating and disheartening situation, especially because there were no security cameras in the parking lot, making it difficult to identify the culprit or provide any proof. You had your car repaired, and thankfully, you didn't encounter the cyclist again. Moving on to your third story. It occurred several years ago when you were driving home from work late at night, around 10 p.m. Your job at the time was almost 30 minutes away and you lived in a somewhat secluded house. Please continue with the details of this story. Encountering the hitchhiker multiple times in different circumstances certainly adds an intriguing and somewhat eerie element your story. It's quite unusual to come across the same person in such a remote area. Initially, when you saw the man on the side of the road with his thumb out like a hitchhiker, it struck you as odd, given the rural and secluded nature of the area. There weren't even sidewalks, so it seemed unlikely that he had been able to reach this location through hitchhiking. Understandably, you chose not to offer him a ride and continued on your way. However, a few days later, as you were leaving a grocery store, you spotted the same man standing on a sidewalk. At first, you didn't recognize him, but when you did, you couldn't believe the coincidence of encountering him again in town. This unexpected repeat encounter 
left you wondering about the odds of such an event. Then, fast forward to another night when you were driving home from work. Your work schedule was erratic, and you often had unpredictable hours, making your commute late at night. This time, you reached your street, which was known for its quietness and large yards. The story appears to be ongoing, so please continue with the details of this encounter and its resolution. Encountering the same hitchhiker in your secluded and wooded neighborhood on multiple occasions must have been quite unsettling. It's not something you would expect to happen, and his presence raised many questions about his intentions. After seeing the hitchhiker actively trying to hitch a ride on your street again, you decided not to stop and inquire about his situation due to a bad feeling you had about him. Upon arriving home and going about your evening routine, you eventually glanced out of the front window. To your surprise and unease, you spotted the same man standing in your yard near a tree. Your front yard was spacious and partially wooded, creating a distance between your house and the street. You observed the man in the dark, uncertain if he could see you inside. When you briefly looked away to grab your phone and prepare to call 911, the man disappeared. You scanned the yard from various windows inside your house, but couldn't locate him. It left you feeling paranoid and uneasy, constantly checking the windows to ensure he wouldn't return. The story appears to be interrupted at this point. If you would like to continue or share any further details, please feel free to do so. The sudden attempt to open your front door must have been extremely unnerving. It's understandable that you reacted quickly, grabbing your phone to call the police. After observing the man standing by your front door, you wisely moved away from the window and ensured all your doors were locked. It was a prudent decision not to attempt any communication with the intruder. You contacted the police and they assured you they were on their way. However, when you checked the windows again, the man had vanished, leaving you anxious and uncertain about his whereabouts. The police arrived shortly afterward and you provided them with a description of the intruder. To your surprise, the police discovered the man hiding on your property when they conducted a search. The story ends here, and it's fortunate that the police were able to locate and apprehend him. If you have any additional details or would like to share the outcome of the police intervention, please feel free to do so. It's fortunate that you acted promptly by calling the police when you sensed something was amiss. The unexpected discovery of the intruder hiding behind your shed, along with the revelation that he was wanted in connection to a robbery in another city, underscores the importance of trusting your instincts and taking appropriate action to ensure your safety. It seems that the man had been attempting to evade authorities and find a way out of the area, which could explain his hitchhiking attempts and presence in your neighborhood. Your quick thinking and cooperation with law enforcement played a crucial role in ensuring the situation was resolved and that the individual was apprehended. Your vigilance and responsible actions helped not only protect your own safety, but also contributed to law enforcement's efforts in addressing the potential threat posed by the intruder. Thank you for sharing your experiences as they serve as a valuable reminder of the importance of staying alert and proactive in such situations. In closing, these stories serve as reminders of the unexpected and sometimes unsettling encounters we can experience in our daily lives. It's crucial to trust your instincts, take appropriate precautions, and seek help when needed. 
to ensure your safety and well-being. If you ever find yourself in a similar situation, don't hesitate to reach out to law enforcement or trusted individuals for assistance. Your actions can make a significant difference in resolving these encounters and maintaining your peace of mind. Stay vigilant, stay safe, and always be ready to respond wisely to the unexpected.